What's up guys, it's Shrek, and today I'm doing a video that I've been requested to do a couple of times, and I've teased doing, and I really wanted to wait until I was like super duper comfortable with both platforms before I made this video, because these are both very cool blasters made by very cool friends of mine, and I didn't want to like sell any features short. I wanted to make sure that we had a mastery of both systems before we made this video, and a pretty good understanding of the price points and options that are available for both. So. Today is the dreaded Caliburn versus FDL video. So let's get the disclaimers out of the way. Both of these I sort of built myself, which is to say that both of them I put together myself, but I did not print them myself, nor did I provide the hardware for them myself. I just got the pleasure of assembling each one. So I actually have a pretty good understanding of what makes each one work. I've been building and using flywheel blasters forever. And obviously like I am an old, old school NIC player. So this whole platform to me is very familiar as is slugs like predecessor to this, which is the plus bow. Now both Blasters are fully 3D printed, completely homemade uh, blasters that fire nerf darts. So that is where a lot of the similarities end. This is spring powered, this is lipo powered. So this is an electronic blaster, and this is a springer, flywheeler, springer, etc. So uh, that's where a lot of the similarities end. However, their performance at baseline is very similar. So both blasters, in their basic, comfortable form, fire in that sweet spot range between like 130 and 150 FPS ish. Now, both of them can go lower, but uh, they are easier to tune on the FDL. So let's turn it on. Mine is an FDL X, which means that it's pretty much the nicest version of FDL that you can get. It has a built in screen giving you real time feedback on what it's doing and where it's at settings wise as well as a dial and a button combination instead of the dials on the side. Now an entry level FDL you'll spend about $300 on. Now they go a little bit lower especially if you're willing to build it yourself in kit form and this one is about $400 said and done because it is fully assembled. It has all the bells and whistles. It's an X, which means it has this advanced component back here. And uh, that, that pretty much covers it. Now, if you want to get into the FDL Vs, which come with extra 3D printed components, you can get a little bit more expensive, but this one's about 400, so to speak. Now I'm using those as general terms. You can get this platform, build it yourself down closer to 300, but most FDLs float between three and $400, whereas most Caliburns float between, I think if you buy just the hardware kit and print it yourself, which like you can do with an FDL as well, but is, trickier because of some of the electronic components, whereas this is a very simple pneumatic system. We'll just talk about them, not kit versions, I guess. The Caliburn floats between, I think, $100 and $140, depending upon if you want Slug to assemble it or if you're comfortable putting it together yourself. So adjusting things on the FDL is easy, and both blasters are so variable. They're such cool platforms because of how they were designed. So all you have to do is turn this dial. It'll let you take its speed all the way up to 100%, which is pretty potent. If you'll notice here, we'll go ahead and throw in a magazine like, and I guess I have my rate of fire in a uh, full auto burst mode. So it's semi-automatic or fully automatic, which is really, really cool. Whereas the Caliburn is only semi-auto, period. It's like a pump gun, literally. So firing these, at full speed is very, uh, very potent. Now, most people run their FDLs, and it's just, it's a testament to the platform how easy it is for me to change this while I talk about it in the video. But if I come into speed, most people shoot theirs at about 80, which is still relatively robust, but is what most people in the SCNC use theirs at. You really don't need full crank for most darts or situations. So I like keeping mine at about 80, 75-ish, and I like the burst fire mode. The fact that this is taking advantage of its built-in computer components, and instead of just being semi or just being full, it can be three round burst is pretty insane. So Steven did come out, his break is over. Sorry, Steven, so three round burst is a really cool feature. Got it. Um, 
that's the FDL. As far as the Caliburn goes, again, there are less options for your Caliburn, but it does something that the FDL can't do. So, whereas the FDL can change very easily in seconds on that dial system, and it can go from being semi to full auto like that. There are none that can't do that. The, uh, the Caliburn can do its own special trick, and its big trick is if you are into NIC play, it can uh, fire half-length darts as well. And that's because the way that Slug designed this breach, everything is guided up here, and this pusher mechanism just moves things into the breach. So as long as you're using pretty much any clip system, it will work. Full lengths are pretty sweet. And then half-lengths, this is a bunch of X darts from my uncle hangover in Singapore in one of his Explorer magazines, which is very nice. Not a lot of people running around in the States with kit this custom. So with half length darts, ooh. Steven, are you okay, buddy? All right, so with half length darts, it gets even better performance and uh, more accuracy because that is the nature of that ammunition, particularly X darts. Now, ergonomically, this is something that I'm very familiar with. It's got a trigger with a return spring. It's got a magazine release down here, which admittedly you have to pull the magazine back for. You don't really want to slip this because it is 3D printed, but um, the ability to hop between full length and half length darts means that in theory, you could just have one blaster for all of your games. As long as your stock ammo class or your full length or your Sambo or your super stock or whatever you want to call it allows for the use of homemade blasters that hit pretty high FPS, which the SCNC does, uh, this is a very cool option because you could take it to an NIC war or an SCNC war. All you have to do is pop this back piece off and there are multiple different prints and iterations that let you do this and change the spring out and you can get different FPS out of it. I know people have gotten the caliber up to 300 FPS using a K14 spring. Mine, I think, currently has a K25 in it, the 26 being a little bit more potent, but I don't need that much power out of mine. Um, I'm pretty happy with it now. Neither uh, blaster is a clamshell, which is just interesting. All Nerf blasters are clamshell open and, and shut. This is a full homemade thing where it cinches together in the center with these rods, and then the FDL almost has like the same sort of thing, whereas it's got the brushless motors up front, and then the control system and this brain back here, and then kind of mates together at the seam here you can see. Now, because they're both fully 3D printed, they both have the option to be printed in whatever colors you might want. Interesting that both of mine are red and gray and red and black. Uh, if you are new to the channel, this is sort of my color scheme, which is... Uh, it, it comes up a lot, I guess, is the best way to put it. But I like both of these platforms. I like them both very much. I think that they each shine in their own way. Interestingly enough, like both creators, Slug and uh, Jesse of Project FDL, are very capable of making the others thing. I think that Slug has made an FDL. I'm not positive on that. And I know that Jesse's cranked out at least uh, two or three Caliburns at this point, And they are very nice. So, like, there isn't a lot of... I, Collaboration over competition is always the way to go, I guess, in any sort of niche hobby like this. So they get along really well. So making a versus video is somewhat ridiculous because they're so very different and they're at such completely different price points that instead of telling you which one's better, I'm going to fire them for you and then I'm going to give you my overall thoughts. Alrighty, so we'll send the FDL down at Steven first. Again, we'll set it to, let's do two dart burst. You mow through that very, very quickly. Let's go ahead and adjust it one more time. And all of these you can change and set into preset modes, but I do most of mine on the fly. Let's just show you how quickly we can mag dump these, I think 12 in this P-Mag into Steven at ridiculously high velocity. So for close quarters, I think that the FDL is where it's at because that's pretty ridiculous. So let's go ahead and power down. So the Caliburn is very rewarding of experienced nerfers who are very familiar with this platform. It's no secret that I have a lot of pump action springers that use full length springs. Let's go ahead and throw in some full lengths first and show you what it's got. So very accurate, very powerful, long range shot, 
are just as nice. An interesting feature that the FDL sort of has because if the FDL, you can just shoot so quickly that this is a non-issue, but in a caliber and if you want, you can pump once, pump twice, you can double feed. The barrel is a continuous length and you get a shotgun burst that's not nearly as much fun in my opinion as just firing through. Rate of fire with this depends on how strong you are, what spring is in there, how comfortable you are firing fast, how accurate you want to be, etc., etc., and so forth. But we will try and fire it as quickly as we can in a controlled manner at a target that's 20 feet away. So very fast, very speedy, but you will note that by moving the mechanism that quickly, we did get a weird hang up here where this dart twisted up on itself. And it's just kind of the nature of the game. Like it is a breach system, which means that the failure point is the breach itself. It's not a big deal. We cleared it and we're back in action. That can be done very quickly on the field. Uh, I don't think that I've ever had a jam with my FDL and I've used both of these a reasonable amount, both at SE and C Wars in Scotland and uh, in the backyard just doing videos for you guys. But very happy with this. Of course, where I think that this platform shines the most is in taking the half length darts and really shooting for like long range targets that are very far away. I believe that the Caliburn actually outranges the FDL. And that's just because it has this option and it can get so much more power out of its system. Whereas the FDL has rate of fire in a way that the Caliburn can't compete with. But this is insane. Like that's two headshots in a row. And I feel like we could do that from any distance. Just to prove my point, I'm actually gonna go behind the camera now. We'll leave the camera pointing this way, but I'm gonna go like 60 feet back and I'll just show you what's up with that. So in conclusion, I think that both are actually just a fine deal, especially like considering that this one is pretty much three times the price of this one. I just wanna say that like, I think that they're both very fairly priced. This is mostly hardware and is, they're roughly the same amount of, I think, 3D printed stuff. I don't know the exact print times for each blaster, but I think that this is mostly hardware and this is mostly software. And when you combine them together, the software is just infinitely more expensive than the custom hardware that goes into the Calibern. A lot of this hardware is pretty cheap, which is why it costs less. Some of it, Slug has to machine himself, but all of this is done by Jesse. All of the programming, all of the coding, everything that went into this was like, developed by him and so he has to order custom boards from China and that's not cheap either. So they're they're fairly priced. I think that if you're young and you're just getting into the hobby, it's probably better to start with a Calibern because it will legitimately do everything that you need it to do at a much lower entry point. But I think that if you've decided that Nerf is for you and you don't have an FDL, it's something that you might want to save for or look into because like the FDL 2 in particular, the X model is just such a sweet blaster to use. It's such an incredible platform and I really, really enjoy using mine. So I think that they're both good as far as like which one's better, the Calibern or the FDL? Uh, the answer is like the Eldorado meme, like both, both, both is good. I take both of them with me to the SCNC. They both perform very admirably on that field and it's probably the most competitive super stock field in the world. And there are a lot of FDLs. There are not as many Caliburns just because geographically the Caliburns come from way up north and the FDLs come from 20 minutes away from the field, so scoreboard, but uh, I'm very happy with both of their performance. I think that they're both very interesting blasters. And if you'd like to see an in-depth review on either the FDL where I build it start to finish or the Caliburn where I kind of stitch it together and talk about it, I will link to both of those full reviews at the end of this video. Which one do you like more? I am really sincerely very curious. Let me know in the description box below. Uh, if money wasn't an object, we'll, we'll say that like if money wasn't important, would you rather have an FDL or a Caliburn? Do you prefer like very streamlined Springer performance or the ultimate in versatile brushless flywheel stuff? Looking forward to your comments down below. Can't wait to read all of them. And as always, much love. Nerf on, Drek out. Uh -huh.